सो हेलो गाइज वेलकम बैक टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल इन दिस वीडियो वी विल इन्वेस्टिगेट अ फैसिनेटिंग टॉपिक ऑफ मास ट्रांसफर ऑपरेशन दैट इज ड्राइंग वेर इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट वॉट इज ड्राइंग एंड क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ ड्रायर्स सो लेट स्पीक एन आर डिस्कशन विथ वॉट इज ड्राइंग ड्राइंग इज अ मास ट्रांसफर ऑपरेशन दैट इन्वॉल्व रिमूवल ऑफ एनी काइंड ऑफ मॉइस्चर फ्रॉम द सॉलिड The question here arises that how drying is considered as a mass transfer operation the reason is very simple let us take a example of wet clothes that we dry on a clothes line the wetness is due to the presence of water in it when water evaporates the mass of water gets transferred to the surrounding and drying operation is accomplished talking about chemical industries drying is the final step of the series of unit operation which takes place in a particular process after this step the product is ready for packing now moving on we will discuss about classification of dryers discussing the classification of dryer it is not simple to classify the equipment or the drying equipment some dryers are continuous while other operate in a batch a few involves agitation of solids whereas other remains unagitated even in few condition the drying operation is carried out under vacuum and so the temperature is reduced some of the dryers can handle any kind of material while others are too specific to the type of feed dryers can be further classified into two sub categories from which the first is the dryer in which solid is directly exposed to the hot gas which is usually air and second is dryer in which heat is transferred to the solid from an external medium such as a condensing steam which is usually through a metal surface with which the solid is in contact which needs to be dried now let's understand the types of dryer with various examples so imagine that you have wet clothes that you want to dry okay you can use different methods to do that right one of the method is to use hot air to blow away the moisture from the clothes this is like using an adiabatic or a direct dryer because hot air is in direct contact with the clothes and transferred heat to them another method is to use a metal rod that is heated by electricity or fire you can hang the clothes on the rod and they will dry the clothes slowly this is like using a non adiabatic or a indirect dryer because the heat is transferred from the rod to the clothes through conduction not through direct contact a third method is a use of a microwave oven to heat up the water molecules in the clothes and make them evaporate this is also like using a non adiabatic or indirect dryer because here the microwave energy is not in direct contact with the clothes but it heats them from inside for example they uses hot air and metal rod both at the same time this is called direct indirect dryers because they use both adiabatic and non adiabatic ways of drying now in the case of adiabatic dryers okay let's understand it more easily with an example okay imagine that you have a piece of paper that is wet and you want to dry it you can use a fan to blow the air through the paper and dry it faster this is like using a cross circulational drying because the air is moving across the surface of the paper and taking away the moisture you can also use this method for other things like a bed of grains or a slab of cheese or a sheet of plastic that needs to be dried the air can be blown across one side or both the sides that you want to dry it is depending on how you arrange it the main idea is to use air to remove the water from the surface of the thing which you want to dry so this was about cross circulational drying next is about through circulation drying let's also understand this with an example imagine that you have a bed of coarse granular solids like sand or gravels you want to dry these solids so that you blow gas through them the gas will pick up the moisture from the solid and carry it and carry it away this is called through circulation drying the gas velocity here is kept low in through circulation drying 
to avoid an entrainment of solid particles this means that the gas is moving so fast that it picks up that it picks up and carries away some of the solid particles if this happens the solid would be lost and drying process would be inefficient so to resolve this problem we should take care of the gas velocity in the case of through circulation drying nextly now we will be discussing about the third type of adiabatic dryers which also we will discuss with the help of an example here solids are allowed to fall downwards through a slowly moving gas streams means the small particles of solid material are falling downward through a gas and that is moving slowly upwards this can happen in some industrial process where solid needs to be dried or separated from the gas for example in a rotary dryer where wet solids are fed into a rotating cylinder that has a hot gas flowing through it the solids are lifted by the cylinder and they fall from the gas which dries them some fine particles of solids are carried away too for the next type of adiabatic process imagine that you have a container which is filled with sand and you need to blow air from the bottom at a low air speed the sand will stay still and the air will pass through the gaps or the voids between the grains of the sand this looks like a pack bed but if we increase the air speed the sand will start to move and mix with the air forming a fluidized bed the sand will look like a boiling liquid and the air and the sand will have a similar velocities this is also a type of adiabatic drying now for the last type of adiabatic drying imagine that you have a device that mixes floor or any other solid particles and air together the air is moving so fast that it picks up the floor particles and carry them away this process is called as entrainment the mixture of floor or air that goes away to the another devices that separates them this device could be a filter or a cyclone separator or a gravity settler and this is called mechanical separation here the the floor which get mixed with the air is intentionally blown away and taken to another mechanical devices which separates them this process is called as pneumatic conveying because it uses air pressure to move the solids so this was all about adiabatic dryers now moving on with non adiabatic dryers which is the other type of dryers in the case of non adiabatic dryers they are a type of indirect or a contact drying where heat is supplied to the main material that has to be dried by a hot air or by other external source of heat rather than a hot gas the vapor produced by the evaporation of water or solvent is removed by the vacuum or by a small amount of sweep gas the non adiabatic dryers have advantages of avoiding the oxidation contamination or dilution of the material by drying gas however they have disadvantages of requiring more energy and space than adiabatic dryers non adiabatic dryers can be classified according to the solids they are exposed to the heat non adiabatic dryers can be classified according to how the solid are exposed to the heat source they have a numerous amount of types from which few of them are listed below the example includes tray or shelf dryer drum or roll dryer or slide dryers we'll discuss about non adiabatic dryers in detail in coming videos until then that's all for this video hope you like this video thank you for watching if you find this video helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more informative content as always feel very free to leave any questions or comment down below if you required any dedicated video on process engineering chemical engineering or process safety chemical safety i will definitely work on it and give my best efforts thanks for watching and see you in next video